Hey friends, welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. Today we're talking about our sergers, specifically those of you who have more of a hate-love than a love-hate relationship with yours. Let's get into it. If you own a serger or maybe you're in the market for a serger and you're researching problems with sergers, more specifically if you own a serger, you might have had problems with it. This was me all the time. I like, I, my serger still has quirks about it. I bought it second hand. It's a lower end model and I have made so many garments and surged for so many miles with it, but it does still have its quirks and sergers can be quite temperamental. So I wanna highlight it's really common glitches or issues that can happen when you're using your serger and how to fix them. Now, if you don't have a serger and you're kind of in the market for one, I actually have a really good video for you. It is the number one video on my YouTube channel and it is all about what a serger is, what it does, and do you really need one? So I will link that down in the description box of this video for you to check out, or you can check it right here. I will put an iCard in, in case you wanna go watch that one first. Don't forget to come back to this one. So, number one, probably the biggest issue that I hear about when talking about sergers is it not chaining, or not making the thread chain, right? It's not working properly, it just comes out as four separate threads and why isn't it working or why isn't it tying? <laughs> I think a lot of this happens because we don't know the mechanics of the machine. It's not as simple as a sewing machine where you just have a top thread and a bottom thread. Now I'm gonna be referring to my Singer Ultra Lock which has four threads and if you have only a three th thread machine, this nothing much really changes. You're only just gonna have the one needle thread instead of two. So I will say with any of these issues that we're gonna talk about, the biggest thing that can help you to learn more about your serger is to put a different color thread into each of your spool holders and then thread it that way, you know? So that your left needle has one color, your right needle has another color, upper looper is a third color, and then your lower looper is a fourth color so that as you're surging and as you're learning, you can see what each thread does. When we get into things like why isn't my serger tying, why isn't it making the chain that I need to use my serger, we're looking at the way that it's threaded. So this is like number one thing about serging is you need to have it threaded properly. Very, very important for it to be able to tie the chain or make the chain. My serger, and I would reckon most sergers have it either on the machine or in the manual. Mine says it right on the machine. I need to thread the upper looper first, then the lower looper, then the needles. It, the needles aren't so important as to which goes first. Mine says left needle, then right needle. I don't know if it really would matter and make a difference. The reason we need to start with the loopers and specifically the upper looper and then the lower looper is the way that they interact with each other and then in turn the needle threads that are coming down. So if you open up your machine and you run your machine when it's when you have it threaded properly and it's working, you're going to see that the needle threads come down and the loopers come up from this way and they tie together to create that chain that then comes out the back of the machine. So we need to make sure that the needle threads are coming down and interacting with those looper threads the right way. If they're not interacting properly, then it means that they can't tie properly and that's why you're not getting your chain of stitches like you're supposed to. So if you're having troubles, a lot of times it can be solved by just re-threading your machine. Unfortunately, if something breaks, like a, if a thread breaks in your machine, you might have to go back and re-thread almost everything unless you kind of know which way things are supposed to go. And that'll just come in time and by watching the machine and seeing which way that lower looper thread goes over or under your upper looper thread and then how the needle threads come down after that. 
So again, once you have it threaded right and it's making a nice chain of stitches, open up the machine and run it. If you can't run it with the cover open on one of my machines, you can't. Then just take the hand wheel and crank it only towards yourself and then you will see how the, the mechanics are actually working and you'll know better of how things go in that machine. You might even want to take some pictures or a video to know how it is supposed to look and work when it is doing it what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so on that note, I kind of already touched on this, but breaking threads. Why is my serger breaking threads? Why are threads breaking when I'm serging? So this can happen for a variety of reasons. It can be that your thread cones are wrapped up somewhere and there it's you know, not allowing it to come off of the spool, so then there's too much tension and the thread breaks. It can be caught somewhere on the inside, maybe it's not threaded properly, or it can be something with the fabric itself. My machine doesn't love wovens. I typically always have a ballpoint needle in there, but even with regular uh, universal needles in there, it still doesn't love wovens. So occasionally I'll go too fast and it won't be able to work that fast with the fabric and I'll break a needle thread. Much rather break a needle thread than a looper thread though. So you really just have to diagnose why is the thread breaking. If it is a fabric issue, try changing your needles. If it is something just as simple as that it's caught on something, then that's an easy fix. But really your threads shouldn't be breaking if everything is threaded properly and nothing is getting hung up and you have the right needles for the job. And lastly I want to talk about skip stitches because this is a really common problem and it's a really easy fix. It's the same thing that happens on your sewing machine if you try and sew a knit fabric with a universal needle. You're going to get skipped stitches. Likewise with your serger you need to have the appropriate needle. A lot of sergers use regular sewing machine needles in them. Mine doesn't. I have a Singer Ultralock like I mentioned and it doesn't use regular needles. If you are in the market for a Singer Ultralock, I almost don't recommend it for that reason. I love the machine as it is and I love that I got it second hand and I love how much of a workhorse it is but I don't love that it needs separate needles because I can only get mine from one lady in the city and it's kind of a hassle. So that is really disappointing. I mean, I'm sure I can find them online. I haven't been able to yet. It's just been nice to support someone locally, but it is kind of a hassle that if I run out of needles, I run out of needles. I can't just grab another sewing machine needle that I always have on hand and stick it in there. So I kind of have to be prepared for that. If you are sewing knit or stretchy fabric, make sure you have a ballpoint or a stretch needle in there. If you're sewing something woven, you're gonna want a universal needle in there. So changing the needle on your serger should help the skip stitches problem. If not, it might be something bigger and you might need to take it into the repair shop to have a look at. Hey friends, it's me again. So I was just about to go edit this video and I realized I had a question or comment about serger so I thought I would address it and it actually made me think of another thing that I want to mention too so this person said that their problem with serging is the fabric is bunching up after it goes through the needle I haven't really had this problem but my guess would be and then I don't really want to say this because it sounds really like accusatory but um maybe your thread tail isn't like you're not leaving a chain there and then it's getting sucked down you want to leave you want to make sure you're leaving a little bit of a thread tail there so that it's it's already like surging chaining um but it also made me think of the differential and sometimes this is a really common problem is your fabric is going to be like wavy or else really gathered when it goes through the serger now if you have differential feed which I think most sergers nowadays have, I don't really know, but uh, you'll have differential. So on my serger, it's down here and it's just this little dial type thing. Others will have them like on the sides or somewhere and it'll go from stretch to gather or it might just be a number where one end of the spectrum means to stretch and then the other end of the scale is to gather. So you might need to look in your manual or do some research um, to figure that out and that'll 
setting your differential is going to depend a lot on fabric type so if you're using a lighter weight knit compared to a, a like a really heavy duty knit then your your differential will change in between those two fabrics um but most of the time if you're sewing like a lot of jersey or like cotton lycra you can set it and it should be pretty good for most fabrics that you're going through so i did just want to mention that i hope that the person having trouble with that the fabric bunching up yeah i would just say to make sure there's a thread tail there and then and then pull on it if you have to just gently like just to kind of help feed it through i'm really not sure why that would be happening it's almost like you're it's not feeding all the way through but yeah, so hopefully that helps solve some beginner surging issues and uh, you get to see real life me today. <laughs> I just thought of another one and this is like the main reason, the main reason that I thought to make this video in the first place is fabric bunching up before the needle slash um, not cutting and then getting stuck in the loopers like ask me how I know the the way to solve this is that well the reason that it's happening is because the knives aren't cutting and the reason to solve it the quick way that I have found because this works for me and this is what my um, repair lady told me is that the knife the lower knife just isn't um, like it slipped down so you might have hit a pin or you might be sewing some really bulky fabric and it just pushed that lower knife down so all you have to do is take a screwdriver, loosen that knife, and then slide it back up. Also wanna make sure your upper knife is moved out of the way. Mine actually has a little notch on it to show where it should be aligned. Um, or you can just align the top of the knife with the top of the plate there and just keep kind of adjusting it until you get it to where it's cutting really nicely. You can also sharpen serger knives, and I've never done that, but my repair lady did it and I don't think it's that big of a deal so maybe if you have a file or something uh, you could do that but yeah just adjust that bottom knife until it's cutting nicely and then I think that should solve a lot of your problems and then when you go back to tighten it just tighten it as freaking hard as you can with a little screwdriver so thanks so much for watching if this video helped you out please give it a big thumbs up it really helps my channel also helps if you hit that subscribe button thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one Bye.